Hello? Ooh. Hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here today. I'm going to talk about security. Awesome. Yeah. All right, uh, this theater is very impressive, so it's a, if I at some point I'm speaking French, that's totally okay, right? Uh, who am I? I'm Sarah Khalil, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm working for Sensio Labs, and yeah, I'm a trainer, a developer. I love to share, that's why I'm here today. And yeah, what's the plan for today? Hopefully you will learn things, otherwise I hope my jokes will make you laugh. Um, yeah, security with authentication, then authorization, and at the end, of course, if you heard the guy before, you know, someone called Fabian, he talked about Symphony 3, so basically I'm going to talk about Symphony 3 uh, with the security, right? Okay, so security. You know that the, um, there is a component called security, and there is also a bundle Okay, so basically what you have to do is configuration, configuration everywhere. So, you know, when I began with uh, Symphony and uh, especially with security, it was like pain in the neck because uh, I love to debug with uh, var dump, sorry, dump. Um, and yeah, talking about dump, you know this guy? He's Nicolas Grecas. And yeah, maybe you heard about the fact that there is a com community award. Vote for this guy, he's really swaggy. Uh, and yeah, of course for my boss too, because yeah, he's really nice too, okay? All right, back to business. Uh, authentication. It's all about making sure that uh, the user is who he claims to be, okay? Not like this cat. And there are four key concepts and I'm going to talk about all of them. User, firewall, provider, then encoder. So, what do we have to write as a developer? As I told you, all configuration, okay? And basically, this is what is happening in Symfony. But yeah, take a deep breath. I'm going to explain everything slowly, hopefully, but we don't have that much time, right? So, user, a user has to hold credentials and roles, okay? And of course, it has to implement some interface, either user interface or advanced user interface, okay? Firewall. It's all about making sure that when a user comes somewhere in your application, he will be asked to be authenticated, okay? So let's take an example like this. You have a application with uh, some uh, URIs beginning with slash shop, slash admin, whatever you want, and you want that when a user comes to your application and uh, type slash admin something, it will be authenticated. To do this kind of thing, you have to write this kind of thing. So firewalls are under the, the key security because we are talking about configuration of the security bundle, and you have three main information to give. The first one is the provider, okay? And the provider, we will see that after, but it's just about making sure that you're saying where are your user, okay? Then when the authentication may, uh, may occur, okay? And the last thing you have to say is how the user needs to be authenticated, okay? All right, so you have some built-in uh, uh, way of authenticate your user, maybe you know them, HTTP digest, HTTP basic, you have form based and you have um, X509, um, 509 sorry, certificate and you can implement your own actually. Okay, so in my big schema I showed you before, uh, we are talking about this thing on the left, so the firewall. So let's say we are a user and the user types uh, slash admin slash my profile. It begins with a slash admin, and as, I, as you saw in the configuration, basically, you said, okay, I need authentication. So the user is redirected to the login form, okay? And yeah, after that, he has to give some credentials to begin the authentication flow. All right, let's continue with the provider. Um, 
the provider is basically something to find and or create your user, okay? So in your configuration, you have this kind of thing. Under security, you have the name of your provider, then how the user needs to be retrieved. And in this case, I'm just saying it's going to be in the security.yaml file, okay? So actually, you have memory, but you have more. It could be from the database, could be from LDAP, could be from Facebook, could be from GitHub, Twitter, whatever you want, actually, okay? So most of you maybe use OAuth, even if it's for authorization. That's weird, right? But I won't talk about that. Um, so provider in my big schema. I'm coming from the firewall this time, and yeah, I forgot to mention that this is a listener. It's, uh, it's uh, listening to uh, the, fir the very first event triggered by Symfony, which is kernel.request. And yeah, it calls the provider thanks to the, the method load user by username with uh, some something, some string. Uh, it's not, uh, we are not obliged to pass actually a username, that's weird, but yeah. Any unique identifier to get your user at some point. And yeah, the job of the provider is just to return a user object, and that's it. Uh, if you want to implement your own, you just have to implement this interface with those three methods. Of course, the first one is mandatory, as the uh, d the last uh, three. But um, yeah, refresh user and uh, supports class. A refresh user is kind of uh, uh, nice because it's called at every request. And yeah, according to what you want to do, maybe update your user or just say it's not supported. Uh, for instance, when you are doing um, authentication thanks to, um, uh, through APIs, let's say, uh, if you are doing your in a restful way, you have to make sure that it's uh, stateless. So every time uh, you do a request, you have to make sure that the user is authenticated again. So in your refresh user, you will say, um, basically throw an exception and say, okay, it's not supported at all. And the supports class just say, okay, I'm just supporting this kind of user. So just the full qualify name of the, of the class you are uh, managing. Last concept of authentication, of course, encoder. Basically you have to, um, the each job is just to hash and compare a uh, password. Okay, so what you have to do in your configuration is that, is that kind of thing. So under, again, security, encoders, you just have to give the um, namespace of the, um, of the class you want to, uh, to manage, of the user, and as a value, you just have to give uh, how the um, password is going to be encoded, okay? In that case, we say it's going to be in Bcrypt. So in my schema, how does it, how does it look like? Um, we first need to get the encoder. And to know that, um, yeah, because I didn't mention it, but you see it's encoders. So you can manage actually a any type of user you want. So when you are in this case, you have to find which kind of uh, encoder you have to get according to the type of user you have, okay? So when I say you, actually, it's Symfony. Um, yeah, so we have the factory, it gets the encoder thanks to the, the object user we got from the provider right before, okay? And yeah, we get the encoder because we have the type, then we know that it's Bcrypt, for instance, okay? After that, we just have to call the method is password valid thanks to the um, argument, uh, yeah, the password that was typed by the, by the user at the beginning, and at the end, it returns true or false. If it's true, the user is going to be authenticated. If it's false, of course, it's going we are going to have a 401, unauthorized, which is weird, because we are talking about authentication. Okay, if you want to implement your own, you have also an interface called password encoder interface, okay? You have, of course, the is password valid that you saw, and you have also the method encode password. And basically, I think you easily understand what is going on in there. So all together now, you have your firewall with three information, your provider, then where and or when your user is going to be authenticated and how, okay? 
then you have to give how the user is going to be retrieved, which is basically the provider, and of course, one encoder to make sure that um, the password of the user is going to be well encoded and you will be able to, um, to make sure that the password typed by the user or the access token or whatever is correct, okay? In our big schema, again, uh, the user uh, give uh, his uh, credentials and the firewall um, just listen to one event and uh, actually it gets the information that was submitted by the user. So the authentication can begin. We have the provider that needs to get a user, an object. Then we need to get the right encoder according to the configuration. And at the end, it's all about making sure that the password typed by the user is the right one. If it's not, we get a 401, okay? All right, that's all for authentication. See, it's not that complicated, actually. Authentica authorization now. Most of the time when you do authorization, it looks like this, okay? You are in your uh, controller, and you do something like, yeah, get the right service is granted, and then some string which represents uh, the rules or permission or whatever you want. And if it's not okay, you just trigger a exception, okay? Maybe you heard about this one too, UX uh, thing. Um, so instead of typing what I showed you before, just have to do this deny access and this granted, okay? In your template, looks like this. And of course, in your service, it looks like the same thing. You just have to inject the uh, security authorization checker. All right, how does it work? Most of the time, people say, magic. It's not. <laughs> I can tell you, I read the code, because it's open source. <laughs> um, OK, so let's look a look, take a look at this service. And basically, we are going to uh, just take a look at this method, which is, is granted, right? In there, we can see one thing that is very important, which is get the access decision manager and call the method decide, OK? It takes a token, attributes, and object. What is an attribute? It's basically an array or just a string. Uh, most of the time we pass something like role admin, role user, role whatever you want, but actually it's kind of permission, okay? The second argument you can pass is an object, and actually it could be anything that can help to make a decision at some point to say access granted or access denied, okay? And the token just hold the user, okay? The decision manager needs some information. They are here. We have voters, we have a decision strategy, and we have two configuration variables to make a decision if the voters can't make a decision them them themselves. Them okay, I have a problem with this word. Sorry. What is a voter? It's basically just a class, okay? And in there, you just get some information, the role and uh, the permissions and uh, some objects, and you do your business logic there, and at the end, you just have to return access granted, access denied, or maybe abstain, okay? Like a jury, all right? And yeah, just for the record, you know that this is a service, and you have to tag it. And because you have to tag it with a security voter, there is uh, a compiler pass. I put the name of it, maybe you wanted to know. Um, it added it, and uh, yeah, that way we can do some things in the decision manager. Um, yeah, there is something quite interesting because uh, um, most of the time I mix things uh, between a priority of a listener and priority of a voter, okay? So if the priority, actually, yeah, the, the, the sentence is really nice. Uh, the highest, the last to be executed. If you don't put any priority, it's going to be zero, okay? So, I talked about some configuration variables. Actually, I talked about those two here. Allow if all abstain and allow if equal granted de denied, okay? In here, I'm in the security.yaml, okay? And I just give the strategy. So. What you have to do is to just implement your service and then put some configuration and that's it. The, deci the decision manager can work uh, properly. 
Um, the value of those uh, parameters can be affirmative, consensus, anonymous for the strategy, true or false for the last two one. I won't repeat them, it's really hard. Um, and this, those are the default values. So by default, if you don't put anything in your configuration, you need to, to know that it's affirmative strategy. And yeah, if all uh, voters abstain themselves, it's going to return false. And if all voters uh, can't make your decision because they vote the exact same con um, opposite, it's going to return true, okay? So that's it. You know everything about uh, what a decision manager needs, but you still don't know what is going on behind those uh, strategies. So I told you that there was affirmative consensus and anonymous. In here, I am in my access decision manager in my decide method, okay? And in there, according to the configuration variable you put in your, in your security.yaml, you will have, um, actually the decision manager knows which method to call, okay? The first one is affirmative because it's the default value. I've put that one uh, first. So it says, if one voter says yes, access granted, uh, the, um, the end user will have access to the resource, okay? The second one is decide consensus. For this one, just remember that majority has to say yes, to say access granted. So when we do the, the count of, of uh, access granted for all voters, uh, we, we remove from the equation uh, the um, abstainers, okay? And yeah, you would say if uh, the voters that are saying access granted are exactly equal to the number of voters that are, are saying um, access denied, what is happening? Yeah, the, f the configuration variable uh, just appear here, which is allow if equal granted denied, okay? Remember, by default, it's true, okay? So if you want to change it, security.yaml, uh, and you just change it. And the last one is anonymous really easy to understand. In here, if one say no, you have access denied. So you have to make sure that all voters says access granted. Um, there is a one case that I didn't talk, to, uh, talk about because you have uh, for the three uh, strategies the same uh, behavior. Um, if all voters returns, uh, return access abstain, there is, uh, so they can't make a decision, you will have your configuration variable that will um, take a decision for you, okay? And again, by default, it's false. All right, so there, in the access decision manager, again, in the design method, you have the call of all voters done, and according to the result they you will have, it will return true or false. It's your, um, it's your call actually to return a 200 or a 403 for forbidden, okay? Uh, yeah, just a thing, uh, never call your voter yourself. I saw that several times. Don't do it, <laughs> just don't do it because you just bypass what I talked about right before. Uh, just a quick uh, thing. You have to think about the fact that when you are using the, um, the strategy, either anonymous or consen consensus, uh, you have to make sure that your voters are light because actually all the voters will be called. For the affirmative, remember, if one voter says yes, we stop and that's it. For the other one, or the ones, uh, you need to, um, actually Symphony needs to know all the voters be, uh, before uh, getting a decision. Okay, so all together now, we have the method is granted that you know, that you use, okay, in your templates, in your uh, controllers, in your services. Uh, it needs um, actually to call the design method, okay, and yeah, you need four things. Voters, a strategy for the, to take a decision, and two uh, configuration variable that we saw right before. According to the strategy you chose, the method decide affirmative consensus anonymous will be called. And yeah, it calls directly your voters. Your voters and the voters coming from Symphony because you may know that there are uh, already uh, voters implemented for you. And at the end, it's just about returning true or false. 
Okay? All right. Enough for authorization. See, it wasn't that complicated too. More information, but you know. What's new in Symphony? I know you are really excited. Uh, we have two new components. Yay. The first one I want to talk about is LDAP. I don't know how to say it in English. So in French, we say LDAP. Okay. <laughs> so before, when you wanted to um, implement uh, uh, authentication through LDAP, it was really hard because you had to uh, ask to your colleague, yeah, did you do that before? D do we have a bundle and so on? Now it's built in in Symfony, but be careful. It's uh, tagged as internal. So you have to expect DC break until uh, 3.1 or, or more, I don't know. But yeah, it's quite really, it's really nice actually because this pull request was open like two years ago. So really nice. The second component is Guard. And you know this guy, Ryan, he's disguised as uh, Fabian here. I know you didn't recognize him. Uh, tomorrow, he will talk about Guard. That's why I won't talk about this today. Uh, tomorrow, 9 a.m., be there, even if you made some things, I don't know what, <laughs> in Paris uh, tonight. But yeah, I know that it will be really awesome because I saw it. And yeah, really nice talk, so go there. Uh, last thing, I'm going to talk about a little bit about deprecations because uh, Fabian told that uh, we have a really nice deprecation framework, and that's true. Uh, the first one is, uh, you heard about this, of course, security.context disappear, and now you have two new um, services which uh, are uh, token storage and authorization checker. Token storage to get the user and authorization checker, as I sh uh, showed you before, to call the isGranted method, for instance. There is something else that I discovered actually because I never used it before. Um, there is intention uh, configuration that you can put in your firewall and basically you can say, okay, for the form login, for instance, I want a CSERF token. The name of the configuration uh, just changed. Okay, now it's CSERF token ID. Um, yeah, voter interface. You know those two methods that you don't know what to do with? It's my case. It's deprecated. It's going to be removed in 3.0, and actually, it's out, so it's gone. Okay. Uh, about voters again, uh, maybe you heard in 2.6 that uh, there was a, a blog post saying, "Okay, now you have to extend from the abstract voter." Not anymore. Uh, now you have to extend from the voter, and you just have to move uh, all the. Um, uh, business logic you put in uh, the vote method in the vote on attribute, okay? And in the supports, you put everything you need uh, that you put in um, sub support attribute and uh, supports class, okay? Um, one last thing is that the uh, subcomponent ACL, actually it's not removed, uh, but you can see that in the security component, the folder, of the subcomponent is now removed, it's somewhere else. Um, yeah, now it's not going to be supported anymore by the core team, it's like community support, something like that. And you, I don't know for you, but I'm really happy about this new, because every time people in training says, oh, what about ACL? Just use voters, come on, okay? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this conference, th this presentation. This is my cat. So if you want to follow him on Twitter, Lannister, uh, thank you very much, guys.